So hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's and we have here another Ford Transit DPF. So usual problem again, he's had it, the DPF cleaned, um, it's come back again, he's had it regen, fourth regeneration three or four times. Okay, it's a bit rainy and windy outside, so apologies if the sound was a bit bad out there, but he's had the vehicle regeneration, fourth regen, uh, three or four times, he's had the DPF cleaned and the problem keeps coming back and the person who's doing it has gave up so using the launch Eurotab 2 let's see what codes we have so we've only got one code for the particle filter restriction now within less than two minutes I found a problem here so let's go down along and have a look exhaust gas differential pressure there 2.5 Let's accelerate it up. And it's not moving. Switch the vehicle off. We're still on 2.5, so we definitely got a dodgy sensor there. And that is the sensor just down there. So we're gonna get that swapped over. So let's concentrate this video on these sort of situations. Why uh, is my DPF keep blocking? Uh, why is it failing forced regenerations? That is why, because if you have a sensor that's not working, your forced regenerations are just gonna keep failing, even if you try it three or four times like someone has done. It's not gonna work. You have to have everything engine-wise has to be in good working order. So if you've got any sort of faults in here for your EGR valve, air flow meter, uh, glow plugs, Anything like that, um, oil level sensor I've been seeing on these four transits a couple of times. Um, if you've got any of those issues, your regenerations are just going to be a waste of time. So we are now just priming up the vaporizer. We've used this option here, it's fuel system vaporizer prime. Got the DPF vaporizer here. Pressure. Build it all the way up. That's holding. We're just going to put a blowtorch on it. cleaned out the vaporizer we're just gonna re-prime it and test it again you can see now we've got fuel coming out it's now connected back up to the vehicle so what I've done is we've opened up the vaporizer used the blowtorch there to uh, unblock it and refill it out now we're just testing it to make sure that it's got fuel coming out just up there behind there you got the little vaporizer fuel pump not sure if you can hear that working and over here we have the vaporizer okay so that's the vaporizer cleaned out and it's now working so yes we did see fuel coming from the vaporizer after the test that's done now we've replaced the DPF pressure sensor so we'll go and read the data stream on that there we have the vehicle on idle 2829 HPA uh, let's accelerate up to 3000 and see how many we have 175 let's just do a quick accelerate up so we're hitting like 300 get that on a graph there so you can see there we're hitting over 300 and 3000 rpm Try and hold it steady. There we go. We have 155. Now already that's come down because I did do these tests before the before I just cleaned out the vaporizer and I've primed the vaporizer into the DPF that was sitting on 255 and the idle was sitting on 38 millibars, which is now 31. It's come down slightly already. 
we're, we're going to clean it out now. So this is just the main points here why you can waste your money on DPF cleaning and you can waste your money on forced regenerations. I hate when people come to me and say, oh, I've had four forced regenerations. If the first one doesn't work, don't try again. And to be honest with you, just I don't really do forced regenerations whatsoever anymore unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, doing a forced regeneration is, is just putting extra wear on everything. And if your DPF is really blocked, all you're going to do is overheat it and cause damage. Okay, so what we're going to do is use some of this launch DPF cleaner and we're going to put 50% in with 50% water. Now normally we'd use deionized water, but not that it makes any difference, I don't think, but I just prefer using the deionized, but it is bank color day, we are on boxing day, so we're just using some standard tap water here. 50% mix, and now we've got that full. We're just going to use this little trim tool here to get the DPF holes off. Just like that. And you can see someone's already left the uh, clip up there because it wasn't attached. Now I'm going to use a little bit of rubber tubing to attach to my comb here just to get a seal. Push that on. Attach that on here. And we'll just get the fluid now and just get it squeezed in. It's just connected to the compressor. And just pull the tube off. Just gonna hold it until the pressure dies down a bit. She is a squirter. Okay, we're just inside the vehicle now. Got it started up. Hold the revs at about 3000 for a few seconds. It's a bit sensitive there to pedal. And we'll just give it a couple of boost accelerations there like that. Hold it on around 3000 if we can. Very sensitive. So we'll just hold the revs there now. And we can just watch it drop. Now what we'll do is do a few full revs again, like we done at the start. Let's see what we're peaking at, just over 200 now. You can see it's coming down now. We're peaking at around about 170, and we got to 200 there. It'll come down. Accelerate it up. Hundred and ten, hundred and five-ish. Now that it's down, the levels are down enough. We're going to go to special functions and reset the. Where is it? Fuel economy tests. Let's go in here. See if the DPF's in here. The vaporizer there. Oh, what have I pressed? Don't want ADAS. Reset the particle filter. Learn values. This one. Press OK. So we just turn the engine off and ignition on. And now that's complete.
switch ignition off. Now that we've reset the values, we shall now be able to delete the code. If you don't reset the values, this code won't delete. So now we can delete that and it won't come back. If we go back in and do a scan there, you can see there's no DTCs. Back into the live data, idle. See, we have no engine management line on now. Idle is at 6.4 HPA, and the vehicle has only been running now less than a few minutes. So that will lower down, and we'll hold it up to 3,000 RPM. Some of these newer cars are really difficult to uh, get the revs exactly where you want them. They're really sensitive. So we are on round about 57. We've got the rev slowly creeping up. We're trying to trying to hold the rev steady. You can see there that's just slowly creeping down. Put it back on the chart. So idle do a full rev. Peaks out at about two hundred. That will come down. That will come down. It's just been running for a couple of minutes now. So we have around about six millibars on idle, three thousand RPM. We have round about forty-five. So we are in plenty of good, uh, plenty of a safe range there. Let it idle out. So as the DPF gets hot, these um, transits, they've they've got um, a different type of uh, DPF than you'd normally get in more expensive cars. You have uh, silicon carbide DPF, or in these transits you have uh, a different type of DPF, which is uh, called a courier light. And when they get hot, they do swell up slightly, so the pressure do sometimes increase a little bit when the vehicle's hot. That's it, we're all done. See you in another one.